Shop, shop, shop. Now, in this video, I'm going to try my hand at making one gallon batch of tea wine. I figure since I still have a few more months before my coffee wine is ready to be tasted, we may as well just fill in some time and get this one started. Now, to make our tea wine, we're going to be using 10 tea bags. They could be any kind of tea you like, any kind of herbal blend you like, just something that you like. Now, I've seen this recipe again using anywhere from six tea bags to as many as 20 tea bags. Now, we're going to be using at least four cups of sugar. That might vary a little bit depending on our hydrometer reading, but let's just be honest. There's not a whole lot of sugar in tea, so all the sugar is going to come from our plain white sugar. We're going to be using a quarter teaspoon of Red Star Premier Coupe de Blanc wine yeast. And as I always say, if you don't have it, you can always use a little standby. That will still work. We'll need at least one gallon of water available. We'll need a carboy, jug, demijohn, take your pick, to ferment everything in. We'll need an airlock with stopper. It, of course, would really be helpful if you had a hydrometer or a testing tube so we could determine how much sugar we need to add or not add to get to our desired initial starting gravity point, which is going to help us to determine how much alcohol we've produced at the end of the process. And, of course, by using your sanitizer of choice, make sure all of your equipment has been properly cleaned and sanitized before starting this project. And that's what I'm going to be using to make this tea wine. To get this process started, we're going to take about, well, I don't know, roughly half of our water. Yeah, let's go ahead and try and get as much of that in the pot as possible. And remember, we're going to be putting in four cups of sugar, so we're going to leave space for that. And... Let's go ahead and bring this up to a boil. Speed the process along a little bit. Let's put our cover on. Now that our water has come to a good boil, we can go ahead and drop in our tea bags and then turn off the heat. And we are going to let these simmer for a good 10 minutes. Now, you don't really need to be precise about the time. I mean, 10 minutes is good for a nice, relatively strong brew. So, with time being up, we can go ahead and remove our tea bags. And following that, I'm going to put in three of our four cups of sugar to start. Now, yeah, there are online calculators that can tell you exactly how much sugar you can add to get to a specific AVB level, but I'm not using calculators for this. And I've already learned my lesson once about just dumping everything in only to find out later that that was a wrong thing to do. So I usually start out short and then make up the difference as I go along. But this is enough with the water being this hot to go ahead and dissolve those three cups of sugar relatively easily. And we can go ahead and let this now come down to room temperature, take a hydrometer reading, find out how much more sugar we need to add, and then go on from there. Let's go ahead and start the process of moving our tea into our formula. (laughs) 
All right. Now, as you can see, now as you can see, we're coming up a little bit short. So now's the time we can go ahead and add in the rest of that water we saved. We're going to leave a decent amount of headspace because I don't know how much this is going to foam up after we've added the yeast and things have begun to ferment. We're going to put our cap back on. And since I've got the opportunity, we're going to go ahead and give this a good vigorous shake. After adding in the remainder of our water, our new hydrometer reading comes in at 1.068. Adding in a quarter of a teaspoon of yeast. And this part is purely optional, but if you're not blooming your yeast and since I'm not using a wide mouth fermenter, I'm just going to give this just a light little shake to get that yeast down in there. Let's go ahead and add our airlock. Now for this step in the process, we want to label our creation. We are making a tea wine. And we started it on this date and our starting gravity was 1.068 now for the next several months there'll be some occasional rackings to get it off the lease that's going to develop on the bottom help clarify the wine following that is going to be a degassing process just in case Followed by pasteurization, followed by bottling and the whole nine yards, all of which you can find in the winemaking process playlist on my channel page. Okay, it's now been 12 months since we've uh, started making our tea wine. And in case you've noticed, yes, I'm still wearing my favorite shirt one year later. As long as it holds up in the washing machine, it's good to go. Now there's for a few particulars. All right, tea wine born 1, 2022. AVB came in at 9.71% and it's been pasteurized. Uh, apart from that, I mean, it's got a little haze to it. There is new sediment on the bottom, which is always a good sign for, as far as I'm concerned. And we are just going to get right into this one. Give you my first impressions. <laughs> All right. Always, I always sniff the bottle just to make sure that nothing bad has happened to it. Uh, I've got an upcoming video uh, coming out shortly uh, where I talk about one of the aspects of um, what could possibly happen if a fruit fly gets into your wine. <laughs> it's not a pretty picture. However, Nothing's happened in this particular case, so we are going to just go ahead and get that first glass. I think that should do it for tonight. It smells like sweet alcohol <laughs> for being less than 10%. Um, oh, uh, of course, uh, in the bottling process, which I did, God knows how long ago, it's been degassed and it's been back sweetened. So whatever it tasted like when I gave it a first tip back then, it's not gonna taste like that now because it's had time to bottle condition and so on and so forth. But let's get right to this one. Make this a short video. This is the profile shot so you can make sure that I'm actually drinking what I made here. things that hit you. One, 
course, with all those tea bags, the tannin count is it's a bit on the high side, so it's it's slightly astringent, astringent. It's not you know terrible or anything like that, but you notice it. Um, what does it actually taste like? It tastes like sweet tea, kind of a kind of a watered down sweet tea. It's what it tastes like to me. Um, when I reviewed the initial part of the video uh, after I boiled the tea bags, put them in the carboy. Uh, I then saw myself adding what looks like five, four or five cups of water on top of that. Uh, just on my initial impression, uh, what I'm tasting so far. Probably use a little bit less water. Uh, it's not thin. It, it does taste like tea, kind of a sweet. It's not like a heavy syrupy sweet tea or anything like that, but you know you're making tea. It's got a light body overall, that's for sure. Those tannins really kick in at the end. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, my initial impression again was that uh, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. I'm trying to think of what I can do to make adjustments. Um, if anything, maybe cut down a little bit on the acidity. Use half of what I used in the, in the initial video. But beyond that, no, it's not bad. Yeah, a little bit less water. And I'll make these adjustments in the uh, ingredients section of this video. Mm, excuse me. And um, what you'll find in the uh, uh, video description um, but yeah, yeah, I think next time I make this and there probably, and there will be a next time, um, maybe stronger yeast, give it a little bit more of an ABV boost, uh, a little bit more sugar in the initial, uh, uh, in the initial, uh, making of it. Yeah, slightly higher AVB, more than the 9.71% that this is. Um, uh, reduce the amount of acidity just by a tad. There's no getting away or around the, uh, the, the astringency of the tannins. <laughs> That's for sure. Not something you want to oak age or anything like that. Uh, but no, this is not bad at all. If um, you're just looking for a bottle of something light and refreshing, that has a tea flavor to it, this is it. So again, there's my take on making uh, my first batch of tea wine, adjustments to follow. Uh, of course, as always, if you like what you see here, please click on that subscribe button, show some love, become a member, show some real love, become a patron as well. And I'll continue to do these on a more regular basis. So until then, see you in the next video.